Welcome to the nice devotional centered on the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're going to talk about faith, repentance, baptism, receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost, and enduring to the end. How all of these steps bless us and our families for eternity. So, let's get started with the prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this day. We're thankful for the opportunity that we have today to listen to this devotional. And we pray that as we do, that we can be guided by the Spirit, that we can receive personal revelation as for our faith. We pray that we can be able to know how to help those around us and how to contact and speak with more people in the area. We're thankful for thy love and kindness, and we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ, he's our Savior, our Exemplar, and our Redeemer. But why? What was Jesus Christ's purpose and mission on this earth? We're going to take a look at his purpose, his mission, and also the divine gospel that he taught during his earthly ministry. Let's go. God sent his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into this world so that we can all feel peace and joy. Additionally, Jesus Christ came to this world so that we can all live again and our spirits can reunite with our bodies. But how? As a result of Adam and Eve's transgression, everyone experiences death. Fun fact, two out of every two people will die, but through the Savior's grace and mercy, we can live again as resurrected beings and be clean from sin so that we can live with our Heavenly Father again. Because of the sacrifice of our Savior, known as the Atonement, all people can return back to the presence of their Lord and be judged according to their works and their desires, and to be judged according to the laws of justice and mercy, with Christ as our advocate. But what is an advocate? Savior is our advocate, which means that he satisfied the demands of justice for us if we repent of our sins and try to keep the commandments. He stood in our place and suffered the penalty for our sins. That act is what the atonement is. Because of his selfless act, Christ can plead with the Father in our behalf. However, Christ did not eliminate personal responsibility. We must accept him, repent, and obey his commandments. But how? We show that we accept Christ and that we have faith in him by doing his will and keeping his commandments, including obeying the first principles and ordinances of the gospel. What's the gospel of Jesus Christ? In short, it's the teachings of Christ. In the Book of Mormon and the Bible, we learn that the gospel is made up of five key points. First, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Second, repentance. Third, baptism by immersion for the remission of sins. Fourth, the laying on of hands for the gift of the Holy Ghost. And fifth, endure to the end. In conclusion, without Jesus Christ, we could not live with our Heavenly Father again. We couldn't be cleansed from sin and we'd be completely alone. But as we have faith in Jesus Christ, repent, are baptized, receive the gift of the Holy Ghost and endure to the end, we will be able to live with our Heavenly Father again someday. Hey, well, we're here. So now that we know a little bit more about what the gospel of Jesus Christ is, we're going to talk about faith and how faith in the Lord Jesus Christ leads us to the next steps to progress and come closer to Him. Let's go! Wherefore, whoso believeth in God might with surety hope for a better world, yea, even a place at the right hand of God, which hope cometh of faith, maketh an anchor to the souls of men, which would make them sure and steadfast, always abounding in good works, being led to glorify God. And now I, Moroni, would speak somewhat concerning these things. I would show unto the world that faith is things which are hoped for and not seen. Wherefore, dispute not, because ye see not, for ye receive no witness until after the trial of your faith.
Now that we've learned about faith in Jesus Christ, we're going to learn how that faith in Him leads us to repent and to feel joy and forgiveness for the sins which we've committed. So, let's take a look. Oh no! What am I gonna do to fix this? Ugh. It's okay, Elder. Mistakes happen. Luckily, Christ has given us the ability to repent and to fix our mistakes. Let's learn how. Repentance is a gift that God has given us that through the atonement of Jesus Christ, we can become perfected. We can be cleansed from sin and we can fix our mistakes. It's all possible through a five step process. The first step to repentance is to recognize that what we did was wrong. We may feel sorrowful or feel bad for what we did, and that's all right. That's part of the process. That comes with a desire to change, having faith that we can become better, we can fix our mistakes, and to do that, we have to follow the next step, which is, which is to confess, is to tell the Lord in prayer what we did, and if necessary, to tell the people that we wronged what we did as well. Once we do so, we'll feel that heavy burden has been lifted from us, and also, we'll be prepared for the next step. This next step is restitution. This is where we do all we can to fix the damage we may have caused. And once we do that, you know, we're able to physically mend the mistakes that we may have made and to help other people that we may have hurt. The Lord has also given us the Ten Commandments. These are a list of rules and guidelines that if we follow, we'll be blessed and protected. The Lord is bound when we do what He says. And he has told us to do things like, I shall not covet, I shall not commit adultery, I shall not bear false witness. It's just three of the Ten Commandments. But when we follow these, we're protected from making mistakes. We're protected from making you know, big mistakes that would do us a lot of damage. And also, when we follow them, it shows our obedience to the Lord. It shows that we care and that we love Him. And when we do that, you know, we learn to trust Him. More importantly, He learns to trust us. The last step is to acknowledge the Lord. To acknowledge Him as our Savior and Redeemer. Because really, change can only come through Him, through His atonement. We want to become better, we want to become more like Him, more Christ-like. We have to trust in His atonement, His infinite atoning sacrifice, has paid the price for all of our sins. If we do so, and we repeat this five-step process over and over again, we'll be able to achieve what we want, we'll be able to be changed, we'll be able to become new people, and receive new hearts, as it says in Ezekiel. And you know that as, as you follow these steps, and as you try and repent, and to change yourself, the Lord will be there right next to you with you and I'll be able to guide you through this process as long as you need as much as much patience as, as you need. All this is possible through Jesus Christ. He allows us to repent. If we follow these five steps, the same steps we just went over, we can do anything. The Lord has told us that in all our ways acknowledge him and he shall direct our paths. We read in the Book of Mormon in 3 Nephi chapter 7, verse 24, that there were none who were brought unto repentance that were not baptized with water. We know that after we repent, the first fruits of repentance is baptism. And we have a video explaining baptism and why it's important and how we can come closer to our Savior Jesus Christ through it. So let's take a look at that. Jesus was baptized by his cousin, John the Baptist, in the River Jordan, or Jordan River. <laughs> John the Baptist was in the water, baptizing other people. And then he saw Jesus. John's like, what? You want me to baptize you? You should be baptizing me. John asked why he needed to. He didn't have any sin. Jesus says, I must be an example to all who is righteous. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. So then he baptized him. He got baptized by immersion by going all the way underwater. Heavenly Father was happy about it because he knew that it was going to help other people to be on the right path to go up to heaven. And then Heavenly Father speaks from the sky and says, Behold, this is my beloved Son, and 
which, who am I pleased? Jesus got baptized and he was being obedient to his dad. He said it was because it was a commandment. He did it because he wanted to be an example so everybody else knew that that's what they needed to do. Even though he's perfect and they didn't need to be baptized, he wanted to be an example so that other people could be baptized and know that that was the right thing to do. I think we get baptized because we it washes all our sins away. It cleans your body spiritually so you can live with God again. Becoming a full member of the church. And um, we make a covenant to Heavenly Father and Jesus that we will keep his commandments. I'm reading the scriptures a lot and following Jesus, praying every day. I'm swimming around in my pool to practice getting baptized. At first, I was kind of nervous. And afterwards, I just felt so happy. And it was good for me to get baptized because I'm the oldest and it set an example for my brothers. I'm going to be I'm baptized and I'm going to be blessed with the Holy Spirit. All the sins that you had are washed away and you are clean so you can get the gift of the Holy Ghost. You have the Holy Ghost to help you and to look after you and when you need him. It allows you to feel the Holy Ghost and it tells you that what's right and what's wrong, like what to do and what not and he, he will be your friend no matter what. After following all these steps in the gospel of Jesus Christ, we must endure to the end, or in other words, follow Jesus Christ until we pass away. We must repent daily, have faith in him, and to renew our covenants with him on a weekly basis when we attend church and partake of the sacrament. All these things allow us to live with our families forever. Let's look at a quick tip from some local missionaries on enduring to the end. What do you call three ducks in a box? What do you call three ducks in a box? A box of quackers. <laughs> enduring to the end. Oh, well, what is it? That's a really good question, Elder Ellington. In fact, we've made a short little analogy video just for you to watch. So join us as we watch the story of Job, the modern version. Job was a humble man, blessed with riches and a great social status. Even with all of his worldly blessings, Job still worshipped and gave praises unto God. The devil complained against God, saying Job only worships God because God blesses Job. Satan asked to try Job to see if Job would still worship God. God agrees on one condition. Satan could not kill Job. Satan was quick to his work. First, Job had been robbed, his riches stolen right from him. And then, quickly following, Satan stirred up anger in the hearts of his fellow men, who quickly and unfortunately started to beat up Job. Satan was becoming well pleased with him, surely thinking that now, surely now, that Job would start to deny and curse God for all the unfortune that has been misplaced on him. After receiving a heavy beating, Job returns home, only to find that he has lost all of his possessions. Everything that he has owned has now been taken back, and Job was all alone. But worst of all, Job was cold on the streets, and only viewed as scum of the earth to others. No one cared for him. He was truly, truly alone, and Satan thought now, only now, would he deny God. And yet, Job still worshipped God. And he prayed for strength in these trials and asking God why he'd let such unfortunate things happen to him. Job continued to endure, even though he was all alone, had nothing left, no friends, no family. Job still never denied God. 
finally, after quite some time, God had answered Job's prayer. Job had continued to remain faithful unto the Lord and endured through those trials, those many, many trials, all physically, mentally, emotionally, that the devil had thrown against him, but he never forsake God, never denied him, and never cursed him. And due to Job's faithfulness, God had returned those blessings that Job once had. He was able to regain his riches, regain his home, and everything with it. And not only was he able to regain them, but he was also been blessed with tenfold even more. Because Job had endured to the end and remained faithful unto the Lord. Job did have a happy ending because of his faith in God. Wow, what a stellar video. It really was. So after watching this video, Other Homan, what did Job do to endure to the end? Well, let's kind of break it down first with the Gospel of Jesus Christ. The first step in, God, in the Gospel of Jesus Christ is to have faith in Jesus Christ. And as we saw, Job did. He always believed in God and trusted in Him. Absolutely. And my, one of my favorite parts was, was his repentance process. You know, even though he was going through these hard times, my favorite part of the video is when he was on the bridge. And, you know, after he got mugged, he still, he sat up and he prayed and he thanks God. And, you know, that's, that's true signs of repentance right there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And because he repented, he was still keeping those covenants that he made. You know, those sacred promises that he made with God. Uh, like at baptism, where he promised to take upon himself the name of Jesus Christ and to continue to move forward and to, you know, do the best that he can. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and you know, without the Holy Ghost in his life, he clearly wouldn't have been able to do that. Um, you know, the Holy Ghost led him, he kept strong, he gave him comfort. Even though everything in his life seemed to be going downhill, he had the Holy Ghost and he believed in God. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that right there, that's enduring to the end. It's because he followed those simple steps and he just continually do it. Because that's what enduring to the end is. It's not just holding on, let it be a one done, but we constantly, constantly do those every day. We build faith, we repent, we renew our covenants, we rely upon the Holy Ghost to give us that guidance and help us grow closer to Jesus Christ. And that is what enduring to the end is. Absolutely. You know, we're not just holding on, but every day we're putting in the maximum amount of effort that we can. It's, it's a lot of work, but it's all worth it in the end. And we can promise you these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hello, my name is Torby Curley and I'm from the beautiful island of Juk in Micronesia. Today I want to bear my testimony about prayer. And before I do that, I would like to share some verses from the Book of Mormon, which is another testament of Jesus Christ. Um, this chapter, it's one of the chapter that talks about Jesus Christ himself. He was teaching the Bib the Nephites uh, about the sacrament and he also um, encouraged them to always pray in his name. Pray to the Father in his name. So in verse 18 it says Behold, O fairly fairly I say unto you, ye must watch and pray always, let ye enter into temptation. For Satan is hard to have you that he may save you as wheat. Therefore, we must always pray unto the Father in my name, and whatsoever shall ask the Father in my name, which is right, believing that he shall receive, behold, it shall be given unto you. Pray in your families unto, in, unto the Father always in my name, that your wives and your children may be blessed. I have a strong testimony about this, about prayer, that I know that God does unanswer our prayers. If we ask Him in faith, He will give us what we want. I have um, an experience that I want to share with you guys. Um, about a week ago, my oldest brother was in jail in Texas. This, um, he got arrested because of drinking alcohol and he also had some, some marijuana. So at that time, 
we didn't know what we can do because we are not so sure how can we can how we can help him to get him out. But I prayed and asked the Lord for help to help him or to comfort him and even her, uh, his family. And God does answer my prayers. Miracles happen. His keys was dropped. They dropped his keys. And I just want to encourage you all to continue to pray to the Father, always in Jesus' name, to ask him to help you and your family. And I can promise that he will. He always there to help us. And I know that Heavenly Father and our Savior Jesus Christ love each one of us. And they want best for us. And as, as we seek our Heavenly Father's help or our Savior, they will help us. We can only say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our dear Father in heaven, we're so grateful for for this day and we're grateful for the opportunity that we had to to listen to this message and we're grateful for the things that were shared and, and the things that we learned and uh, please bless that the world can experience relief from the current situations that we're in right now and we're so grateful for thee and thy son and his atoning sacrifice and we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Make sure to tune in next week on Sunday, same time, 6.30 Central Standard Time, for a live devotional on the plan of salvation or God's plan of happiness for us. Have a good night.